Queen Margrethe II of Denmark hosts a reception in Copenhagen. Queen Letizia of Spain inaugurates the Cervantes Institute in Los Angeles. Queen Rania of Jordan attends a Christmas tree lighting ceremony. And members of the princely family of Monaco distribute Christmas gifts. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name is Alexandra, and this is your Royal Daily News for December 14th, 2022. In Copenhagen, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark hosted a reception inside the Hall of Knights for appointed first lieutenants from the Army Officers' School at Christian IX's Palace at Amalienborg. It's a tradition that Her Majesty the Queen wishes the defense's new first lieutenants congratulations on their new appointment. Yesterday afternoon, Her Majesty the Queen presided over the presentation of the 2022 Amalienborg Prize held at Christian IX's Palace at Amalienborg. Established in 1972 by Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Henrik of Denmark, the prize is presented to an individual or organization that has made an outstanding contribution to, quote, scientific or cultural sectors in Danish society, end quote. The winners of the Amalienborg Prize went to museum curator and author Miss Jeanette Varberg for her long career, as well as in, quote, recognition of her scientific and cultural efforts in communicating the mysteries of the past, end quote. The Science Club also received the Amelia Borg Prize in appreciation of the organization's work in, quote, teaching and communicating science to children and young people, end quote. In Oslo, their Majesties King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway, accompanied by His Royal Highness Crown Prince Haakon of Norway, attended the traditional Christmas church parade held at the Oslo Domkirke. According to the Norwegian Royal Court, the church parade is, quote, for those who serve in His Majesty the King's Guard, and this year was the first time Her Majesty Queen Sonia of Norway was present during the traditional service, end quote. In Stockholm, their Majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden held audiences with the winners of the 2022 Nobel Peace Prize at the Konlinga Slatet. The winners of the 2022 Nobel Peace Prize went to Mr. Alice Bialyatsky from Belarus, the Russian human rights organization Memorial, and the Ukrainian human rights organization Center for the Civil Liberties. In Monacoville, their Serene Highnesses Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco, along with their two children, His Serene Highness Hereditary Prince Jacques of Monaco and Her Serene Highness Princess Gabriella of Monaco, participated in the traditional distribution of Christmas gifts to Monegas children at the Palais Princier. This year, the Court of Honor has been specially decorated with a theme entitled Christmas on the Bank, in tribute to Prince Albert I of Monaco. In the afternoon in Monte Carlo, Their Serene Highnesses Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco, accompanied by Her Serene Highness Princess Stephanie of Monaco and Mr. Gareth Whitstock, attended the inauguration of the new headquarters for the Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation. For 10 years, the foundation has been working to prevent drowning and inspire children through the values of sport. Quote, sport has a power to change lives, positively affecting an individual, a family, and a community. Sport teaches compassion, inspires, and gives hope, and can unite people and countries. More than one million people have benefited from the Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation's programs in 43 countries through 510 different projects." End quote. On the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation, the princess spoke with the newspaper Monaco Mantan about her family, her life, and her health. Quote, I would first like to say that I feel so much better today than I have in recent years. I feel less pain and much more energy. I continue to recover and rebalance myself. It would still take some time, but I'm happy. My family and those I love are my rock. I approach the future step by step, one day at a time. End quote. When speaking about her two children, hereditary Prince Jacques and Princess Gabriella of Monaco, and how they're handling their roles, the princess said, quote, They were born with these responsibilities and duties, 
and right now they are still learning their roles. With my husband, when we have to go to an event, we explain to them what the nature of the event is and the ceremony is. They like accompanying us, and with the prince, the four of us enjoy doing these things together. But as I said, they are still young. They continue to observe, to learn before it will become natural for them. Our children were very enthusiastic to take part in National Day, and we were very proud to see their maturity. National Day is always a joyful time with the family, supported by many interactions with the Monegas population. And this year, Jacques was happy to wear the same uniform as his father. And Gabriella, well, she was very proud to wear her medal. They are two children who have their own language and who understand each other. They love and protect each other and share an immense benevolence between them. It's rather a unique bond, I must say, and I see this particularity that the twins share. End quote. Yesterday morning in Monte Carlo, their Serene Highnesses Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco arrived at the headquarters of the Croix Rouge de Monegasque to participate in the presentation of gifts to Monegasque citizens as well as elderly French citizens who live along the border of Monaco, such as the town of Boussoulet. In the afternoon, the princely couple viewed the traditional Monaco Nativity Trail on the Place du Palais in Monacoville. Thereafter, the princely couple attended a Christmas concert at Hereditary Prince Jacques and Princess Gabriella's school. In the evening, the prince and princess attended the 20th edition of the AIMC Action on Innocence Monaco Christmas Tree Auction held at the Hotel de Paris. For the past 20 years, the nonprofit organization AIMC has held this auction to raise awareness among children, young people, parents, health and education professionals, as well as institutions on the risks and abuse linked to the usage of the internet. In London, at Westminster Hall, His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom unveiled a plaque to mark the place of lying in state of Queen Elizabeth II, per Buckingham Palace. The installation of the plaque continues a royal tradition that stretches back to King Edward VII in 1910. His Majesty also unveiled two unique bronze sculpted lamps featuring heraldic beasts of the United Kingdom, a gift from parliamentarians to the late Queen on the occasion of Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee. On Tuesday in London, Kensington Palace released the official Christmas card of their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales, along with their three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis, walking hand in hand. The image was taken earlier this year by photographer Mr. Matt Porteous in Norfolk. Meanwhile, in Lambeth, Her Majesty the Queen Consort of the United Kingdom visited the Emmaus community at the Bobby Vincent House. The purpose of the visit was to learn more about the charity's efforts to develop women-only provision for those experiencing homelessness. Yesterday morning in Los Angeles, Her Majesty Queen Latifia of Spain presided over the inauguration of the Cervantes Institute. Established in 1991 by the Spanish government, the Cervantes Institute aims to further the Spanish language and culture internationally. Located a stone's throw from Universal Studios, the CI's Los Angeles branch is now the seventh location in the United States. Upon her arrival, Her Majesty the Queen was warmly welcomed by the Spanish ambassador to the United States, His Excellency Santiago Cabanas, the Council General of Spain in Los Angeles, Mr. Juan Carlos Sanchez Alonso, as well as LA County representatives. After posing for the press, Her Majesty the Queen unveiled a commemorative plaque then was ushered into the Cervantes Institute. Whilst inside, Her Majesty the Queen was given a full tour of the study hall and library and signed the Book of Honor. On Monday afternoon, Her Majesty the Queen participated in a meeting with representatives of the Cervantes Institute. The purpose of the meeting was to learn more about the current situation and prospects for the growth of the Spanish language in the United States. Also participating in the meeting 
was the director of the Spanish Trade Office in Los Angeles, Mr. Juan Luis Guillermo, and Spanish film producer, Ms. Ignacio Darnad. This morning in Alcaniz, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain attended the inauguration of the exhibition entitled De Territorios 5 by 50. The exhibition, organized by the Office of the Vice President of the National University of Distance Education and the Institute of Humanities and Heritage, as well as the Alcaniz City Council, is being held in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of UNED. In Brussels, his Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians held an audience with the President of the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Joko Wurudu, at Chateau de Lekin. Yesterday morning, His Majesty the King visited the Belgian television broadcasting network RTBF and the digital platform for teenagers, Tarmac Studios, ahead of the Belgodice student journalism competition. According to the Belgian royal court, RTBF is a, quote, partner of the Belgodice student journalism competition. Belgodice stimulates collaboration between aspiring journalists from different communities in the country. The competition is an initiative of the Prince Philippe Fund, VRT, RTBF in cooperation with Metro and with the support of the Chancellery of the Prime Minister and Brussels Airlines, end quote. In Nijkerk, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands met with residents, volunteers, and relief organizations to talk about their experiences with poverty. Yesterday afternoon in Den Haag, Their Majesties King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima of the Netherlands hosted a luncheon at Palais Nordande for 27 individuals who have, quote, distinguished themselves through special achievement, end quote. According to RVD, the 27 individuals have recently received a prize or other distinction for their achievements in various sectors, such as art and culture, media, science, sport, and business. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg held an audience with the Prime Minister of the Czech Republic, Mr. Peter Fayala, at Palais Grand Ducal. During their meeting, discussions focused on, quote, European and international news and the centenary of bilateral relations and development prospects between Luxembourg and the Czech Republic, end quote. In the evening, the Grand Duke attended a screening of the documentary film entitled Legacy, Notre Heritage, held at the headquarters of the Bank of Luxembourg. The uplifting and feel-good documentary by French photographer Mr. Jan Bertrand tells the story of his, quote, 50-year commitment to raising awareness about the alarming state of the planet and its rapid deterioration in the face of the excessive exploitation we subject it to, end quote. Meanwhile, Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan attended a Christmas tree lighting ceremony at the al Qanader Amphitheater in the town of Fuhis in the al Bakwa Governorate, organized by the municipality of Fuhis in collaboration with the Fuhis Youth Club and other civil society organizations. The tree lighting ceremony featured a reading by Archbishop Atala, as well as a choir performance of Christmas carols. Prior to the lighting of the ceremony, Her Majesty the Queen had a chance to walk around the town center where she visited a holiday market as well as an art gallery. In all Al-Faiba, the Honorable Lady Sayaya Ahad bin Abdullah bin Hamad al-Basariya of Amman visited the Association of Children with Disabilities to view the rehabilitation, educational, and therapeutic services as well as programs provided for children with disabilities. According to a press release, during her visit, the Honorable Lady Sayaria spent time with the children and young people, as well as thanked the staff and volunteers of the association for their, quote, dedication to helping and caring for children with disabilities. In Belgrade, their Royal Highnesses Crown Prince Alexander and Crown Princess Catherine of Serbia hosted a solemn celebration for St. Andrew the First Called, held inside the Royal Chapel at the Royal Palace. St. Andrew the First Called is a patron saint of the royal family of Serbia. And finally, it was announced on Sunday, December 11, 2022, 
that Her Royal Highness Princess Abigail Kinoiki Keaukoliki Kawananakoa passed away peacefully at her home in Nu'uanu, Oahu, Hawaii. Her wife, Veronica, and a close friend of the princess were by her side when she passed. Princess Abigail was 96 years old. On the morning of December 12th, outside Iolani Palace, former KITV Island News journalist and currently the executive director of the Friends of Iolani Palace, Ms. Paula Akana, read a statement entirely in Hawaiian, stating, quote, Hear ye, hear ye. With profound sadness, the Kawananakoa family, the Hale O Na Ali'i O Hawaii, and the Ilani Palace announces the passing of a Royal Highness Princess Abigail Kinoiki Kiakoliki Kawananakoa at 6.45 p.m. last night. We join each other in a period of mourning. Please allow the Kawananakoa family privacy at this time. Services for the princess are being coordinated. When plans are finalized, they will be shared. We place you this mana'o with mournful aloha. End quote. In a statement, Princess Abigail's wife, Veronica Gail Worth Kumwananakoa, said, quote, Abigail will be remembered for her love of Hawaii and its people. I will miss her with all my heart. End quote. After suffering from a mild stroke in 2017, Princess Abigail's health began to decline. In September 2020, I reported that the princess was gravely ill and was admitted to Queen's Medical Hospital in downtown Honolulu. During that time, items from her beautiful home in Punalu'u were put up for auction, which included original artwork, koa furniture, china, and much more. The sale of the auction ended in October. Upon hearing the news of her death, the governor of Hawaii, Josh Green, ordered that all flags be flown at half-mast at the state capitol and state offices until sunset on December 18th. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday, December 15th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.